UFC bantamweight Marcus McGee was born into a life marked by crime and violence. Determined to break the cycle, his mother uprooted the family from their home in Detroit and headed to Arizona, where Marcus embarked on a challenging journey, transforming adversity into triumph and shifting his traumas into the spirited fighter he is today. We head to Phoenix to learn more about McGee's inspiring story in this edition of Origins. What a story it has been for Marcus McGee. I like this guy's attitude. Gratitude is at the center of everything in Marcus McGee's orbit. That take came from his humble beginnings where he told us he didn't have a lot of expectations for his life. I believe my past has molded me in a huge way. I have been through so many downs that I'm never gonna be in a position where I look down upon other people who are down. Like I've been there, I've been through it. There was a point in my life where I didn't believe I was worth anything. For someone like me to be able to be who I am now and come from all the things that I've done and been a part of throughout my whole life, I think anybody can. What a story it's been for Marcus McGee. Oh, Lord, God first. I was born in 1990 in Detroit, Michigan. I have two brothers and one sister. My little brother is the baby and my older brother is the oldest. I was the third boy, so I'm the middle child. Detroit, very hostile territory, you know, a lot of craziness going on. There's a lot of violence, a lot of death in that community. Those were the things that you were surrounded around. Growing up, I didn't really know my father very well and got caught up in that type of lifestyle that came along with being in Detroit. He was in jail since I was about four years old. In the late 80s, early 90s, my father got wrapped up into gang lifestyle, selling drugs and those types of things, trying to make ends meet. 1996, he went to jail and got charged with murder. He was looking at doing 16 to 32 years. When you go to jail like for something like that, you obviously have enemies. So my mom was like, all right, let me get them out of Detroit so that we can give them a chance at least. All we really were looking forward to there was probably the same type of things that my dad was getting wrapped up in. So we moved to Arizona. My mom was loving. She did her best. A lot happened to her, so trying to raise children was very tough for her. As a kid, I understood we didn't have much. We were constantly trying to make ends meet, which meant falling short on bills here, falling short on things here. So we moved around at least 20 times. I did play different sports at different points in my life, but I was never consistent. Couldn't stick with the same team because we moved so much. Couldn't stick with the same sport because we couldn't afford to play those sports. Earlier on, it was harder to make friends just because I was very standoffish. I used to show up to school and be like, hey, who's the toughest guy here? Who's that guy who I gotta worry about? And I'd start problems. I got kicked out of school for having an altercation with my principal. So I dropped out of high school. I felt like I failed. For me, nothing was ever solidified. One thing that was solidified was me getting my skateboard and going out into the street and skating the neighborhood. But when I'm skateboarding, I feel present. I feel free. I'm giving my undivided attention to something that's healthy. I feel like I have purpose. I wasn't out getting into more fights or being violent or doing other dumb things because I was focused on skateboarding. A lot of the things that we were still surrounded in were not who I was selling drugs, hanging out with gangs, smoking, drinking, things that could have got me caught up. I had heard it earlier on in life that I was gonna be like my father, you know, and I never thought that I would go down the path to him, but I definitely thought that I could, and I knew I had it in me to do those things. And then one day, I was 18, me and my stepdad got into a fist fight. My mom kicked me out of the house. My father, he got out of prison when I was about 17. We moved in with him. And everything was okay at first. But then hostility started to break out. So from that point, I slept in the park for a while. I was very confused, very lost, very frustrated with where I was, who I was, and where I thought I was gonna be. I didn't know what I was gonna do until my good family friend took me in. Their family was great to me. I stayed there for about a year. They gave me my own room, took me to go get clothing, helped me get back into school, got a job. They just helped me kind of get back onto the right track again. It was a moment of like, oh, this is normal life. My focus clicked and then my surroundings clicked. I knew I needed to do something and fighting was something that I had done. I had been in so many street fights, all these altercations. I think I'm good enough to at least start the next step and try to do this. After I trained for about two months, 
They're like, we got to fight for you. And I was up for it. I didn't know the difference between unsanctioned and sanctioned fights at the time. It was in a bar. It was the first time I had been a part of any type of event like that. I ended up knocking a guy out in the second round. And that's kind of how everything started. I had like five more unsanctioned fights and then they got shut down and it wasn't a thing anymore. So it was like, okay, well, we need to get into real organizations. What does that look like? The most big things for me is just challenging myself, seeing how good I can be at this thing. To fight for the sake of fighting and seeing how good you are. All this work I'm putting into myself, at some point you want to test that. Ironically enough, I go in, I lose my first two amateur fights. I wasn't ready and it showed. I realized that I couldn't just show up to the gym whenever I wanted. I needed structure behind what we were doing to not only build the skill, but build the confidence as well. Nice. From that point on, I had three more amateur fights. I ended up finishing two of them by knockout, and then one by submission. After I finished that one, I was like, man, I think maybe I can go pro. Maybe I'm on to something here, you know? When I finally turned pro, I focused on getting better. I accredited a lot of my growth to my team. I focused on being on every practice that I could be, being a part of them, being a part of their camps. I focused on consistency during that time. I go out in my first professional fight against a guy who I thought was tough, and I go out and I knock him out in the first round. It was epic. I was like, man, the start of something, right? Is fighting in my blood? I would have to say a yes. How many people really want to walk down that alleyway with one person and find out who is going to come back out of that? I don't feel like a lot of people want to do that. My fight against Luciano Ramos, he was a tough guy. And then the second round, I would find a upcut right hook and that finished him off. I'm a striker. I love striking. I'm comfortable there. I find shots really well there. And that's where I want to be. Marcus the Maniac McGee! After that fight, I went through months with no fight lineup. Things started to slow down. God said, sit still and wait, but be diligent. So I sat still. I know that my performances were speaking for themselves. I was finishing fights and I was doing it emphatically and that's what they like to see. And then I get the call from coach. Hey, Marcus, we looking to fight in the UFC this weekend? Big moment for Marcus McGee and here at the UFC Apex on just a couple of days notice, DC. Let me tell you something about Marcus McGee. Explosive. He's a guy that has all the skills to be in the UFC. I ain't never doubt any person. On any given day, all these guys could really hurt somebody. So in the UFC, I think there's the highest caliber of that. I'm not even thinking about what this guy wants to do to me. I'm just seeing him. It's just a silhouette of somebody in front of me when that cage closes. It's all about what I'm going to do. Oh! Left sat down Newsom. And now McGee looking to pounce. Trying to get the arm under the chin. It's getting close, and there is the tap. Marcus McGee earns himself his first win by submission. My first UFC fight, I get a rear naked choke on a black belt, mind you. It was crazy that I got a submission on my first UFC fight. The feeling of the first win was great. I felt accomplished. No one could take that away from me. I feel stoic. I feel I've done all the things I need to do to just let myself be present and see and feel whatever comes. Whether it's pain, whether it's pleasure, whatever it is, just be free. Gratitude has been the word that you've used a lot this week. Talk about how you're feeling right now in regards to everything with your career, because right now it could not seem to be going better. Yeah, just grateful. You know, this is a short lived. A lot of us think that we're, this is going to be forever. It's never, it's not going to be forever. And I pray that I get years and years of this, but this is just now, you know, and I'm going to use it and be grateful for every moment I get. Life didn't have to work out this way for me. Better people have suffered worse things. When I look back, I'm absolutely proud of myself. It's about the person who I've become. Loving husband, caring father, all these things that I really thought I couldn't be. Ooh, oh, 
Oh, man, he looking good today, though. He came out to show out. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Still good defense. I feel as though every moment that I've been gifted, I should be grateful for. Maybe next time, bro. <laughs> Me and my father, our relationship is better than it's been in years. He just moved back about six months ago, and during that time, our relationship has become substantially better. It looks good. It looks good. All right, yeah. Family gatherings are popping nowadays, but now we got the space. We invite the whole family over. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> I do appreciate you guys being able to come through and you know have this time. Oh, it's great yeah. that we get to spend time like this anyways, you know, yes. especially after everything and life, how life has made its crazy turns, you know. And, oh, yeah. Um, so I just appreciate you guys and really uh, look forward to a whole lot more of this as well, you know. We're safe here. We're loved here. We're abundant here. That's my main focus. In the future, I would love to hold the belt. Breaking in top 15. I think that would be a huge accomplishment. I'm not too overly focused on what's to come. I just want to keep on performing and build something that my family can flourish off of and it could change the scheme of our lives. Marcus, the Maniac McGee!